is going on, everybody? And welcome back to season two of the Kelly Cast. I'm Dan. That's Mike. New color, same show. So Mike opened his computer today to, to start this broadcast, and he said that it told him that it was May 5th. <laughs> Cinco de Mayo was the last time I went on this computer, and I don't even think that was the last time we recorded. I don't, so. think, I don't think it was either. I know the last video that went up on the channel was with Aaron yep. about the, the draft when the Bills traded out, and obviously we know what happened. Buffalo ends up with Keon Coleman. Kansas City ends up with Worthy and, and all that. We'll get to that soon. First of all, just welcome back, guys. We're happy to be here, happy to be talking some football. <laughs> Yes, we may have took an extended break, but I, I think it's necessary just to just to get those. Got to regain. I got to I, for me, I'm the type of fan that I, I got to build up that momentum, man. I got to take a break and then build it all back up. And guess what? Tomorrow we got our very first touch of football, even though they're all third, fourth stringers and guys that are going to get cut next week. But I don't care. We got Yeah, we are heading we, to our first training camp experience with the bills i've never been it i don't think you have right i've been to one red okay. and blue game okay okay one this one. will be my first instance of that yes i've been to plenty of games at the stadium but i'm excited to see the guys and just you know see see how they're gelling um a couple updates here on the bills of course it is a new team it may be a lot of the same guys but it is a new team every year, even even if it's one different guy in the locker room. But it's a new team. But Danny, can we really say that it's that it's not a new team or that it is the same people? Because I mean, pretty sure forty five percent of the offense is brand spanking new. And and that's the point. But there are you know some familiar faces still on the team. Obviously, at offensive line, at defensive line, things like that. Um, let's start today with the importance of training camp hype versus actual hype but because i think it's necessary now on a scale of one to ten being excited about keon coleman right and and the catches that he's been making and the highlights the bills have been posting i'm gonna give that like a seven okay because i think okay of course we're all excited to see what keon's got he's young he's fresh he's new right yep. he's supposed to be the number one receiver the problem i'm having like is the von miller hype okay I love Vaughn. I have his jersey. He's a top player all time in terms of defensive ends. Last year was not the same player. We know he didn't register a sack in all of the games that he played. Yep. So I'm happy. I'm happy that he's doing well in training camp, but I'm not ready to say, OMG, 40's back when he has a sack in training camp. Yeah, we, yeah. training camp is in this early. They haven't even made... Well, they actually did make two cuts mm -hmm. today. So I was yeah. going to say they haven't even made the first cut, but yeah, they, they have made a couple cuts. One of those cuts, Browning, the punter. So the Bills punting yeah. competition seems like it's over. But I will say Browning held for Bass mm -hmm. yesterday, I believe. And Bass was was really good in terms of making those field goals. So I'm I'm curious to see if they're going to bring him back in some capacity, because the only reason I believe he was cut was to make room for the safeties because yep. Cole Bishop got injured and Mike Edwards got injured, which led to the Bills bringing in 36-year-old Kareem Jackson, who I did not know was still in the league. And today they, they signed another safety that they tried out. That's fine. The Bills, we'll get back to them in a little bit. I kind of want to want to take a look around the league real quick. All right. Let's start with our, I don't even want to call him a rival. We'll call him a foe. The AFC East foe, Miami Dolphins, paying Tua Tungavailoa the money. It finally happened, Mike. Let me know your thoughts when you saw the dollar amount for Tua. Uh, why? Um, <laughs> I mean, I think he's a very, very good quarterback. I think he's a top, maybe top 10, just outside of top 10. He's okay. very accurate. I think he's he could be up there. Okay. But I think way overpaid way overpaid but but that seems to be the direction with with any quarterback that you're going to deem that you're going to deem uh a franchise quarterback you're, you're going to pay him regardless and and it's not only that like i think it's about timing more than anything because you see Tua get paid you see kirk get paid you see mm -hmm. 
Jordan Love become the highest paid quarterback annually ever. That's insane to me. That that one, even more than the Tua deal, is insane to me. I get it. He had a good year. <laughs> yeah, a good year. Wow. Um, a good year, and he's worth now the most annually. But Tua's numbers, $212 million extension, 167 guaranteed. I'm going to tell you my first thoughts when I saw it, Mike. Hmm? I said to myself, I wish it would have been more. <laughs> I wish it would have cost the Dolphins just... Just a touch more. You know, an interesting conversation on WGR the other day. They were they were talking about um, the possibility of Dak Prescott going there, mm. and that would be a scary thought. That would be a scary thought. I mean, I I do think Dak Prescott is going to leave the Dallas Cowboys following mm-hmm. this season. I think it's going to happen. They they struggled to to come to an agreement last time, and now you have guys like C.D. Lamb, Micah Parsons, who are all going to be getting paid. Yep around the same time. So I think uh, they're going to struggle to bring him back. Other contract news, Chicago Bears, DJ Moore just got paid, I believe yesterday. He became the first wide receiver ever to have the first 10 years of his career. All of his money has been guaranteed. Wow. (laughs) Isn't that insane? Wow. For that to be DJ Moore, I I think DJ Moore is a solid wide receiver. He's He's number one, right? But, Wow. <laughs> it's a crazy stat. That's impressive. Cra- crazy, crazy stat. I wish my money was guaranteed. Ah, yeah. Right. That, that would be nice. So the Buffalo Bills. Well, let's get back to them for a second, Mike. Um, The question I have to ask you is a complicated one. Okay. And it's a question that I think you and me have spoke about every year since you got back into football, like full time. And it's a tough question because... I think we we all want it to be one thing, but we all know it to be the other. So okay. my question, Mike, is it our year? Do you feel like it can be our year? I don't. I think I think that once we lost Diggs, that there was a slightly different plan and it's where i i believe when it first started when all that stuff and all the hype i i I was on the side of we're that's it we're done we're not even making the playoffs this year (laughs) um but i think that would severely underestimate what josh allen can do in his talent Mm -hmm. uh i think that that it is not our year i don't feel it like i did last year last year i was hyped this year i'm like You know, man, this is starting to turn into the same old Bill story, only we we can't even make it to the big show to lose. I'd I'd rather get there four times and lose than... That's a hard conversation, and I don't know (laughs) if I'd be willing to do that. I I honestly would. You know, I just, I want to get there, man. I want him to taste that blood, taste it. It's, Mm -hmm. he hasn't. He hasn't gotten to get his teeth there, man, and he deserves it. You know, Mike, I I love disagreeing with people, especially when it comes to sports. I I think it makes for great conversation. But I'm I'm with you, man. I I really I want to believe, <laughs> believe, right? It's it's in the freaking title, but <laughs> I don't know that I can. And and my reason is a little bit different than yours. The other teams in the AFC got better. They got better. Miami got better. The Jets got better. The Patriots got better. The Ravens got better. The Bengals are getting Burrow back. Like th- there's all these things going on. And the Bills, what did they do? They traded Stefan Diggs away. They drafted Keon Coleman. They got younger. Which- it, it looks good for next year. I will say Brandon Bean makes the right moves. It, that's not my problem. My problem is the moves that these other teams are making. They're catching up to us quickly. Like we we thought we we had that stretch, and we did have that stretch for about four years. Yeah, jinx. <laughs> but, but now, man, now more than ever, the Buffalo Bills have to show. They have to show on the field that they that they have it. Because right now, I think people are counting them out. And, and like you said, it's not fair to count the Bills out. They still have Josh Allen. And at the end of the day, that's going to be enough to probably get them into the playoffs mm-hmm. and hopefully win the division. So, yeah. <laughs> 
I, I, I agree with that. There's going to be a lot of haters on this video for, for us probably, talking about this. <laughs> <laughs> probably, probably. But, you know, we, like we always say, win, lose, or draw, we're, we're behind the team yeah. 100%. Always. So we're, we're here year us. after year. It affects us when they win. It affects us when they lose. If, if you could see the rest of this basement right now, you would know like how big of fans we, we really are. We have the return of Matt Milano for the linebackers. I think yes. that's going to be huge. We, we obviously saw Bernard have such a bad week one. I remember your dad talking so much crap about Terrell Bernard after week one against the Jets. Mm -hmm. And from week two to week 17, Bernard showed out he was in our top players consistently yep we were speaking all these good things about him and now that they're getting matt milano back i think it's going to help i obviously want him to be healthy first because yeah we, we saw von get pushed onto the field last year and, and you and me talked about this on a weekly basis hey it's been it's been over a year he should be good it's been over a year he should be good i've come to the realization that every player every person heals differently and if he's not ready to go, he's not ready to go. Plus, so. you have to remember the mental aspects of these injuries, man. These guys work so hard, and then and then it's just they're distraught. Even, I, I, you know, like we were just talking about Trey White. He was he wasn't his self last year, and then you know well, he just only played to, four games. True, he, he was solid too in those four games. Solid, but <laughs> not fully back to himself. No, no. And then you know, and then you get hit again. So I mean, a, a lot of it's mental. Too. So I, I think we spoke a little bit about this before it officially went down, mm -hmm. but the kickoff rules are officially changed along with yeah, the onside that's... kick rules. How, how do you feel about the onside kick rules now? You, you have to you have to tell the team you're doing it. it has to be the fourth quarter. All this nonsense. You know, I think they're taking some of the fun out of the game. Yeah, but player, everybody's. Uh, yeah. I think they're feeling the pressure of the whole player safety thing. Okay. I think that the league has to make a tough decision to make itself look like it's protecting its assets okay. and its players. So do I love it? No, but sometimes we have to get used to change. I think it's the same thing for me, like in hockey, there's hardly any hitting, but there's some big hits still. Mm -hmm. I, I think that, uh, I think it kind of sucks cause it's not the game that we used to watch, you know, mm -hmm. but it, at the, at the rule change that I hate the most is the, the t twist tackle thing like how like you're already taking away tackle that we're moving towards what the pro bowl is is, is and it's flag football and i don't want to watch flag football yeah I, the, I think it's especially stupid when it comes to the tight ends how is a six uh, foot safety expected to take down a six foot five 270 and, pound tight end and not only that but every single and i'm not and i'm worried about everybody's safety out there please keep this in mind guys but Every if if that's what the players wanted and voted for, then fine. Yeah. But if it's something that the league forced upon us, then that makes me angry because every single person who plays all seven hundred players throughout the league know the risks, including up and up to death on the field. Yeah. They they understand the risks involved see mike i'm on i'm on the fence with this issue because what is what is true about it that not enough people pay attention to is injuries are caused when tackles are made that way more often than not it, it does happen M sure. McCaffrey, mixon like it yeah. happens all the time and i get where you're coming from i think it's a little bit of both in terms of the league pushing it maybe some players i feel like the widespread of the league probably dislikes you know the move and and probably most of them are defensive players i, I would assume i've watched guys on the internet complain about the aesthetics because the players are going to be allowed to wear the guardian the caps. guardian caps in an actual game and that they and they made these like really ridiculous looking mm -hmm. caps to go over them and these are these are collector guys so they're they're like all upset it ruins the whole is well guess what now your helmet's fresh and brand new so shut up i mean you know now there's no paint marks but regardless I will say the guardian caps 
if they do their job great they look stupid they look stupid they look (laughs) stupid but again player safety if he chooses to wear it for his safety and it is the player's choice they're not mandating this they're just allowing it not yet soon enough (laughs) that's where it's headed sure 100 percent. but yeah i mean i i I understand the safety the one rule i am excited for is the kickoffs where they have to be closer to block we're gonna see a lot less fair catches we're gonna see some returns again. So yeah, that is fun, dude. Yeah, I'm I very excited. I am absolutely gonna love that one. It's gonna be, take some time to get used to, but again, we get to see some take backs. <laughs> I love them. I, I I've who doesn't who doesn't love a, a good return for six? Yeah, punt return, kick return, pick six, all all of those things. Like they're just so electric in that moment, guys. It's a it's a new logo. It's a new year. It's season two of the Kelly Cast. If you enjoy content like this, please like, share, subscribe. You can find us on Facebook at the Kelly Cast. Of course, this will be on YouTube also at the Kelly Cast. If you don't know us, get to know us. Excuse my pun there. If, if he sees the video, he'll he'll know. Um, we do other things here as well. It's it's not just talking about the NFL and, and football. The Kelly Cast predictions will return. Mike was the season record champion in terms of wins. Mitch was the champion in terms of the the Kelly cast championship during the playoffs. Yep. That's going to return. Hopefully everybody's back with the predictions. We'll be having a lot of fun. Maybe talk some fantasy football every here and now you guys let us know what you want to see. That's Mike. I'm Dan. We'll be bringing you weekly content very soon, but for now, take it easy. Mitch, I'm coming for that belt. (laughs) I hope you do. I don't want it to leave the house again.